and we're good. Okay, so please excuse my little piggy in the background, but uh, YouTube, listen, if you're new here, my name is Brandon. I'm a chef here in Silicon Valley, and listen, I bring you valuable content every Wednesday and Friday. So please, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notifications so you never miss a video, and like it, okay? Help me out with the YouTube algorithm, all right? But I'm gonna leave you with some value bombs today. So listen, I always get this question, chef, what type of pan do you use? Teflon, cast iron, stainless steel, and there's so much information out there. But I'm gonna be very upfront and tell you, it's really up to your situation, right? So listen, I'm a professional chef, all right? I live and die in the kitchen, all right, literally. And I have all of the pans, all of said pans, okay? I have cast iron, I have stainless steel, I have Teflon, I also have carbon steel, I also have, uh, what else, what else? I also have cheap pans, okay? You name it, I have it, Le Creuset, I have it all. But I'm gonna be honest, in most of my videos, all right, it, at work, all right, I primarily use Teflon. And now, I know that can be controversial, but I guarantee you, I'm gonna explain why, okay? So as a chef, um, years, all right, I've used stainless steel all class in the top rated restaurants, okay? Now, this is good for a restaurant. One, because you have uh, the longevity of stainless steel. So I'm just gonna show you a stainless steel. This is a stainless steel all clad, okay? And I have these two pans, and I love them, and I do use them, but let me tell you something. The reason why I stay primarily away from them is because you have to scrub them, okay? You have to scrub them, and you have to maintain them. And then also, whatever you're cooking, you have to have a good amount of fat in there, okay? Now, I also have um, an all-clad Teflon. Teflon, all-clad Teflon. Now, these are pricey. I think they're way overpriced, and you can get a, uh, a better pan for, uh, not a better pan, but a, a lower costing pan that does the same job, okay? Uh, but I'll get to that in a minute. Now, the reason why I prefer Teflon, okay, over pretty much everything else, I use it 90% of the time, is because of convenience, okay? And also, I use Teflon at the house, and I've switched out all the pans at work to be Teflon as well. Now, is this, is this uh, against the rules, or is somebody gonna come at me? Yeah, probably, but you know what? Talking about what types of pans you use it's just a lot, it's just like asking whether you like Coke or Pepsi, right? I like Diet Coke. Ooh, trigger warning. But guess what? Listen, it is what it is, okay? Um, and the reason why I use Teflon is one, because um, my wife and I are primarily, we try to do, we try to eat healthy, right? With Teflon, you just need a quick spray. And then the best part about Teflon is after you're finished cooking something, right? You go to the sink, you rinse it out, you wipe it out, you put it back, okay? And that, one, that's reason number one, okay? Some pros about tef Teflon is, you know, they're really easy to clean, really easy to maintain, right? Um, you know, it doesn't take scrubbing to maintain Teflon, which I love. And like, honestly, it's just easier. The fact that I can cook whatever I'm cooking, you know, and then rinse out the pan, wipe it out, and put it back right away is a game changer for me, okay? It is. For me, my wife, that's how we do it. That's why I use Teflon in the house. Now, do I go sear a New York strip in a Teflon pan? No, I would not. I would use cast iron. So I use this cast iron. I have this cast iron I use a lot, okay? This is actually a lid for sourdough. Uh, but I use this cast iron a lot to cook in. Now, is cast iron awesome? Yes, but Listen, it's up to you. I use cast iron for specific cooking techniques, okay? If I wanna get a nice color on things. We're not talking about longevity and it'll last forever and everything. I will tell you one thing. If you cook with cast iron, that's great. More power to you, but look, this thing is freaking heavy. So guess what? My wife, she never touches it. So if I were to take all the cast iron and put them, you know, use all my cast iron, okay, babe, the only thing we're using is cast iron now. She'd freak out. She'd be like, okay, uh, you can use cast iron, but I mean, I'm not gonna use cast iron. So that's another thing. When you cook something in cast iron, all right, there's a few steps after you use cast iron that you need to take in consideration, right? You have to get the food out, okay? Um, however you wanna do that, with, there's so many different ways. With salt, a little bit of oil, burn it off. Guess what, I rinse it under the sink with a little bit of soapy water and then wipe it out, but then this is the most important part. You have to put it back on the stove and get it completely dry and then hit it with a layer of oil, okay? You have to. 
That's how you maintain cast iron. And then also, uh, you know, once cast iron gets wet, that's it, bro. You're, 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 once cast iron gets wet, that's it. You have to re-season it, okay? Dude, my wife is not going through all that. At work, I ain't got time for that, right? So cast iron is good if you are into it, okay? I am not against cast iron at all. I'm not against using stainless steel. I'm not against anything. You need to do what works best for you and your situation, okay? In a professional kitchen, I if I were to build a kitchen right now, I would have a mix between all clad stainless steel and all clad uh, Teflon or what I like to use and what I recommend is these Volrath, these Volrath Teflon are very cost effective. They're literally, uh, they're literally workhorses. They're, um, they are, you know, they have a thick bottom so you can do a lot of things with them. All right. Uh, here's the thing. This new pan that just came out, I actually have test ran and, um, it's called the Anilon X. And uh, as you can see, look at the bottom. I've used this pan. Um, I, I really like this pan because you don't have to be so careful with metal. Now, I don't suggest going in there and digging with metal, but honestly, I tested it. And with the stainless steel mesh, um, you know, it does a really good job of metal resistant, but I wouldn't go in there. I would still respect the pan. But the fact that my wife has used that one the most because of the curved edges, so you can pretty much cook whatever you want in there. But I think that's really important. So it's so. what are we taking here from today? What type of pan should I buy and what type of pan should I use? If you're new in the kitchen, if you're a new cook, new chef, amateur chef, do yourself a favor. Don't buy cheap pans. If you buy cheap pans like this, I'm going to put it on blast. Here, I'll grab it right now. This is a uh, Meeson uh, nonstick pan. Biggest mistake. I wasted, it was like 60 bucks. I bought the set or whatever it was. Honestly, these pans are trash. I don't mean to come after you, but me and the pans are not good. Um, I'll probably cut that out. But um, don't buy a thin bottom pan. What you want to do is get a, uh, especially if you're a new cook, get a one size fits all pan. Whichever one works best for you. Um, now, for me, I like to use. Uh, I have I have all clad. I have a small one. I have this one. But the best the best thing that I found to do is go to like. Marshalls or Ross and go into their pan section and you will get a one-off all clad that is on a deep discount That's where I've gotten most of my all clads from to be honest with you, especially the stock pot So um, here I'll pull that up right now for my stainless set. I've so Sorry, sorry about that. I know it's probably loud. So here's some all clads that I have and um, you know, I got these for a deep discount deep discount at Marshalls and or TJ Maxx or Ross or one of those in their kitchen section. So I highly suggest that if you're a new cook, don't break the bank on all clads, okay? Go to like uh, webrestaurantstore.com and you can find like a Volrath or, or something along those lines. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a few links down in the description so you have an idea of where I got, got my pants from. But you have to decide, it's up to you as the consumer. Right? There's, there's like people that swear by cast iron. There's people that swear by carbon steel. And I totally get it. Oh, that's okay. If I were to open a restaurant, I would add a few, to like two or three carbon steel uh, pans, the blue steel or, um, you know, the, the thin cast iron uh, just for like searing chicken and, and meats that need searing. But, but in all, I will argue that this Anilon pan with the uh, thick bottom like this, you know, I got a great sear out of for chicken and a great sear for steak. So it's getting better, but um, the convenience of nonstick pans for me works the best. So 90% of the time I am using nonstick. The other percent of the time I'm going to use um, partially cast iron and um, partially stainless steel. But it's completely up to you. If you are a stay-at-home mom with five kids and you don't want to be scrubbing stainless steel or re-seasoning cast iron, dude, totally get it. I am not against you. I am, you know what? Actually, I am for that. You have to do what's easiest for you and more convenient for you. If you're a new chef and you want to get into cast iron, you want to learn about cast iron, you want to season your cast iron, like what you've got to realize is as soon as you get cast iron, you need to go through a process that takes pretty much a half a day. It's not like you can use it right out of the box. If you do, you're just doing yourself a due diligence or um, a disjustice. Disjustice. So with cast iron, when you get it right from the store, you have to season it and bake it, okay? And uh, what I do 
is I really like to set, set the seasoning. You have to. And over time, it gets better, right? But you have to maintain cast iron. If you don't, you're just wasting your time, right? Yes, they are in, they're, they're very inexpensive and they last forever, but you have to take care of them. And guess what? Nine times out of 10, I've seen people misuse cast iron. It's just the way of the world. And I get it. Um, for, for me, what I suggest, um, I already said this, but I'm going to revisit. If you're a new chef, if you're, it depends on your situation on what type of pan you should use, right? Stainless steel is a great option. I'm telling you right now, Bed Bath & Beyond, TJ Maxx, uh, you know, Ross, these places, you can get really good high quality pans for a deep discount. And, uh, that's what I suggest. All right. Um, you know, and, and, and listen, it's subjective. So we could go back and forth all day. You know, between different ships. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I like using this. I like using that. Well, guess what? It's so subjective. It's not even worth about talking. It's not even worth it to talk about it with anybody because it's just like politics. You can't get, there's nobody agrees. Okay. So for me, these are my suggestions. These are the pans that I physically use. Okay. And I'm going to be honest. I know it's, uh, it's crazy, but there's two different ways uh, that you can look at it from a professional kitchen where you're not using the pans at all and it's shared between everybody else to my personal home, okay? Now, the biggest thing with Teflon um, is you can't, I highly suggest not stacking them on top of each other. So this, no, no, do not do this. I use this cabinet liner, okay? And then I go into the pan like this. It's very inexpensive. That is the only maintenance that you have to worry about. Okay, and scrubbing the bottom of the pan, but guess what? I don't even waste time with that, especially at home. I only do it at work for show. But um, you know, as you can see, these this look at this, look at the bottom of this. This is gross. It's literally gross. But look, look, this is what matters. So I was used to be really anal about cleaning the bottom of the pan, but then after a while, I'm just like, you know what? screw it. You know why? Because um, the biggest thing that you need to take in consideration is Teflon. You will need to replace. Okay. Arguably, I've had those pans for over a year, but the thing is, is uh, after you heat up Teflon for, for a while, um, you know, it just starts to break down. Um, not like stainless steel, not like cast iron, right? But I've just come to the fact that, you know, maybe once every couple of years, I'm going to have to buy a new Teflon pan. But guess what? They're so, they're so inexpensive nowadays for good quality that you can do it. Um, a good example, this pan is like, you know, 50 bucks. You know, this pan is 50 bucks. So $50 every year or so. It's not a big deal for me. I actually, it's not a big deal. Um, but anyway, that's my two cents on what types of pans to use. I know it was long and winded, but next time I'll try to keep it a little bit more focused. But uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, I forgot to mention this one right here. This is actually a nonstick grill pan I just bought. I do not recommend it. It's too thin. Um, the coating came was starting to come off after the first... Uh, first go. So anything you're going to use for open fire, I would only recommend, uh, open fire. I would only recommend cast iron. All right? I think that's very important. You want something like, like this, but like a good example is my wife is never going to use this pan. Okay. At work, nobody ever uses the cast iron or the Le Creuset. Okay. Ever. I'm the only one that uses them. The Le Creuset and the cast iron. And that is for the plain old fact is that they're too heavy. Okay, there's no, and you have to reseason the cast iron, right? You can't just take cast iron, cook in it, and then just throw it in the sink like you can for this one or this one. You cannot do that with cast iron. So if you want any more details, if you want me to make a part two, let me know. I will be more than happy to talk about it, but it'll be very short. Um, so anyway, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate all of you, every single one of you. I love YouTube. YouTube is my favorite platform, so don't tell TikTok and don't tell Instagram. But I actually like explaining myself and having a good conversation. So smash that like button, hit that subscribe. I'll see you on Friday.